It's herring egg season, and I would like to show you guys one of my preferred ways of pre uh, preparing herring eggs. Um, we'll need to start with some bell peppers, some peas, a uh, type of onion that you enjoy, whether it be green onion or white, red, whatever colors you like, you, you like to see in your salads, and some mayonnaise in this case, and we're going to be doing it with a just plain herring egg salad. Um, but you are more than welcome to add lettuce, uh, any things, uh, spinach, things that you like to see in your salad. Herring eggs goes great with all of them. All right, well, one of the first steps we're gonna do is prep our vegetables. Um, start off with an onion, I guess. And what's really great about this uh, recipe and cooking with herring eggs and stuff like that is that it's all kind of to taste. It's whatever you prefer, so whatever you like to see in your salad, however you like to have your onions cut up, um, that's how we do it. Um, normally I would like to have a green onion on this, but a white onion will work just as good. Um, when you're cooking herring eggs, I tend to like to have a little color added into it since herring eggs are kind of white and don't have very many colors in them. These I'm gonna cut a little long so they don't get lost in all the eggs and we'll probably only just add a half, you know, portion of these. And then a bell pepper, you can go with any bell pepper you like, but like what we were talking about just a moment ago, I like to have color in it. It just adds to the appeal of the whole thing. And the bell peppers I like to kind of dice up into little squares so that way they end up kind of uh, sporadically through the dish there. But again, if you like your green peppers or anything like that, whatever you prefer. I like to cook in the method where if it looks good, then, it, uh, then it's probably done. So when we do these, um, when we start mixing it all together, I want to keep that in mind and put in as many as, you know, looks nice and, and I bet you it'll taste amazing. And as far as our veggie prep, that is about it. And these are our three main ingredients that we're going to be putting into it. If you like more, less, other ingredients in there, you're more than welcome to add it. It shouldn't change much and it should be just as good. So we'll be taking apart the herring eggs. That'll be another kind of prep. Right now I'm just pulling it off of the kelp to uh, kind of bite size pieces. We want to uh, have it around the size that you want to see in your salad. So we're looking for, you know, pieces like this that are gonna be pleasant to eat. Um, we can break them down further as we go along, but right now I'm just pulling them off. We'll give them a rinse. Uh, I hear that when it's on kelp, it's usually a little more salty. And so just to kind of mitigate some of that, we're gonna rinse them out a little bit, let them soak uh, for a minute. The hemlock branches is how I grew up having it. Um, but if you can make it to where you can eat the item that it's on, I think that's even better. Interesting uh, little tidbit about herring eggs is apparently there is people that are such connoisseurs of herring eggs that they could tell you where the herring eggs came from just by their taste, apparently. We've removed the herring eggs from the kelp. There is a little bit of kelp in here. I wouldn't worry about it. This is all edible stuff. Um, if you want to dress it up, you can go through and start picking this out. And uh, an interesting way probably to even to do this is just to cut it up right on the kelp if you're interested. Um, I've always just done it this way off of the branch. So I've kind of fallen back into what I'm used to doing. Um, but you probably could even just chop it up a little bit uh, right off of the branch there. Um, so now I'm going to soak this in a little bit of water, get a little bit of water into the bowl, try to get some of that saltiness out of it since uh, I hear that when it's on kelp, it's a little salty. So we're just going to soak it just a little bit uh, while we get water and uh, all the other preparations ready. And while we're soaking it here, we can 
break it down into bite-sized bits, like we were talking about earlier, to so that way it mixes nicely with all of our other, other ingredients and it is nice bite sizes for whoever's eating. If you like bigger bites, go ahead and leave it larger. But I like to have it kind of spread throughout, especially if you're gonna be mixing it with any greens, which we'll give an example of while we're here. Okay. Once we've got it kind of ripped down to a manageable size, we'll start heating up our water and getting this stuff going. Okay, so we've got all our items ready to go to be put together. We just need to heat up a few of these items. So we're gonna start with the peas. So that way they have a moment to cool down after we get them up to temperature. So peas, you know, you can eat raw. Right now these ones are frozen. So we're just trying to get them warmed up so that way it's not, you know, rocks in your, uh, in your salad here. And the amount of peas, it just depends on how much green you wanna see in your salad or you could leave peas out completely, whatever floats your boat. Um, we were talking about other things that might go into herring eggs. You might do beach asparagus if you wanted to stay local and on that subsistence lifestyle. Once we get this nice and warmed up, we're just gonna strain it and put them off to the side so that they can cool. Clean this out, get some more water in there and we'll start boiling for the herring eggs. So our water is boiling. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit because we don't want it screaming hot and stuff. We want it to be kind of a simmer here. And what we're gonna do is just take out some of these herring eggs and what we wanna make sure is when we do these, we're looking at the color here. So we've got kind of a yellowish color. We don't want to completely get rid of this. As we put it in the hot water, it's gonna start turning white. And, we, and we're not looking for it to go completely white. We're looking to have a little bit of a yellow color there and stuff still. Um, with this being so fresh and just, you know, yesterday everybody got this stuff, you know, erring on the side of caution and going a little light on it. As a matter of fact, I might just do this in little batches to make sure, but you can see here that it's immediately turning white here. And it almost looks like it's, uh, the eggs are kind of coming uh, to like an individual kind of look and stuff. So right here, and we'll pull these ones out right away. And it kind of looks like they're now like individual eggs on there where at before we put them in there they kind of looked like a kind of a gelatinous mass of eggs. Cool. So we put this to the side, let this get down to a cooler temperature. You could put it in the fridge, leave it out for a little bit, but we just kind of want to stop the cooking process here. All right, so last thing, now that everything's kind of cooled down, uh, we're going to just mix it all together with a little bit of mayonnaise to kind of just kind of bind it up. Um, again, this is gonna be to your preference. So if you like it a little more of the dressing or mayonnaise on there or whatever condiment you decide to use, uh, go ahead and add more. And so we're going to try to have the driest bits out here. Okay, and then what we wanna do is there's no precise amounts of this stuff that you're gonna be doing. You're gonna just be doing enough to make it look nice. So, with some red peppers, we're going to, with some red bell peppers, we're going to just kinda dress it up, get a little color spread throughout there. Okay, and then same thing with the peas. And what's nice about this is that if you have it all set up similar to kind of how this is set up, you can have people kind of make their own and get it dressed up how they like to have it. So these onions are probably gonna be a little strong, so I'm only gonna put a few in there. Okay. I can smell them. 
All right, and then hit a little bit of mayonnaise on there. And then we want to just do a little bit at a time so that way you don't, you know, you can't take it back. And we'd have to boil up a whole bunch more herring eggs if we put too much in there. So we're just gonna start with a little bit. Trying to be a little easy mixing it around, not trying to break up those peas or anything. I think we're gonna need just a little bit more of our mayonnaise. We have it a little warm still, so you see it kind of running off there. If, uh, if that bothers you, you, just spend a little more time cooling it down. I'm gonna put a little more in. Since this already has uh, some salt naturally in it, we won't add any, but if you find yours a little bland, you can always add a little salt. Um, and I'd recommend a little bit of black pepper on top and it acts, uh, makes it real nice. So maybe just a little more color. I like to see a little more red in there, a little more green, and mix. And there you go. There is our herring egg salad. So this goes great by itself, so you can eat it just like this, or if you would prefer to add a little bit of those greens, get some of those nutrients and vitamins in there as well, or just something to kind of spread the, the life of it in the household and stuff. Um, give it another mix, make sure we get some of that dressing on there. And then just take a little bit and right on top and mix it throughout. And this goes great with whatever dressing you want to throw on your salad or anything like that. Um, you don't need much. It's almost like a, a baking bit or something like that. You just need a, something to kind of evenly distribute through the salad. And then uh, bone appetit. There you go. Mmm. Still tasty. Mm. All right, so we only get herring eggs in a couple weeks every spring, and so let's take a minute to check out how KIC brings herring eggs to our community here in Ketchikan. Today is our third annual herring egg distribution uh, that Ketchikan Indian community has done for the tribal citizens and for the community more broadly when we've had an abundance uh, of eggs harvested. So uh, the herring eggs are a sign of spring and uh, everyone's really excited uh, for the end of winter and to share in herring eggs, which is very much a traditional food for the Southeast uh, indigenous peoples. Alaska Native people aren't so different than our environment around us. Herring are like a keystone species and everything relies on herring to be able to get through its life and kind of the same thing with us. Um, yeah, you it's, know, it's, yeah. it's a base of the food chain and it's something that only comes around once a year yeah. um, within, you know, like a, a basically a four to seven day time period and once you miss it, like it's gone for the rest of the year. Yeah. So um, I don't know if it, maybe it's a scarcity that brings us together or if it's just, I'm not sure. Well, maybe Tony you, can answer that. Well, I, you know, I, I believe part of it is just that it's like the first fresh seafood you get in the spring and at this time of year even traditionally or even today uh, most people's freezers are their all their fish is gone you know they everything they put up last season is uh, starting to be pretty thin and to have something fresh uh, like herring eggs which is very nutritious as well uh, is is just a treat uh, uh, again if you were having a, a hard winter this is kind of a good way to get lots of nutrition uh, and good nutrients. We came off the ferry uh, this morning about 11 o'clock um, with these big totes full of herring eggs. Um, about Had about three total. You know, we don't want to feed people hemlock wood and pine needles. We want to feed them herring eggs. So we cut off all that big chunky stuff over there. Um, and years past, we were able to give people more herring eggs just because we had access to more. This year, not so much. So they were, um, giving out uh, in each bag about two to four pounds each uh, um, to hopefully stretch out to as many people that we can so that, you know, as many people can uh, be connected with their traditional foods. This isn't like a one-person one show. This is, it takes an entire community to put on something like this. I mean, 
you know, if, if it was just me sitting here, it'd probably take me days to process one of these toads. Um, but we have, you know, I don't even know how many volunteers we have. Um, we have a lot of support from other departments like KIC, like uh, Tony mentioned earlier. Uh, people supporting us over in Craig with the harvesting of the eggs, and we absolutely couldn't do it without them. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just, uh, just want to make sure that um, everybody's aware that this is a community thing and it can't be done without the community, so. And it's nice that KIC could go, be able to go over to POW and get this for us and contribute to all the people in the community. I boil them just for like 10 seconds. You don't want to get them like too white. And I just like them with soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> or in a salad or this recipe on the back. I think Irene Dundas made this recipe. Um, so she, they printed it out for everyone to make it at home, so that's nice too. Hello. Ooh, hello. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Did you get a survey? Yes, I got awesome. one. This started kind of organically with a lot of the fishermen just being native and uh, associated with the native community and wanting to just give back and I started a little bit smaller with a few key people like Trixie Bennett taking a lead and with her connections bringing food over but it, again it was three or four years ago that uh, the tribe decided we could tr to try to take this on because it was a, a bigger project to try to get it to this level and uh, so again that's where my department put some effort in working across other departments. Social service has been integral in working with the, um, uh, distributing uh, the branches to the uh, tribal elders yep. through the program they already have. And again, other uh, departments throughout the organization help out again with the volunteers at this point. Um, but uh, the, the key responsibility has been on the cultural resource department. And it's just a, a nice project that it's, we're really excited to be able to work on. We estimate that we reached about 1,800 people in Ketchikan last year with the eggs that we were able to give out to each other. And that's, you know, it's not all of the island, but, you know, compared to how much, how many eggs we'd be able to get to the people here in town, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, connecting a lot of people back to their traditional foods and their culture with doing something like this. So. And we've been able to do some other things like share with the high school, their culinary arts program. So, uh, you know, so a broader part of the community got access to it and used yep. it for educational purposes that way. Yep. Uh, I think one of Keenan's favorite things is to take it to the Pioneer home, uh, you know, and that's, they're really excited to go ahead and get that fresh uh, herring eggs and that uh, taste of tradition. So uh, uh, we've shared it pretty broadly and uh, when the harvest has been very abundant, we were able to open it up for anyone in the community that, just come and taste it if you want to try it. We, we developed some recipe cards, some background information to share. So if you were, had never tried it before, you, yep. you, could, you could do it, you could get a taste of it. One of the projects we're working on in our department that Keenan's taken the lead on is developing a traditional foods program. And uh, a lot of our efforts to date have been focused on regulatory and policy issues to remove impediments and barriers to the tribal citizens accessing traditional foods. But then again, we want to move that to a second phase would be where we're actually trying to work on harvesting and bringing in some of the uh, some of the foods that we can hunt, fish and gather locally and build that as part of the traditional foods program. Yep. Uh, so that's that's future. We're not there yet and we're not going to be there next year, but uh, it's it's one of our longer term goals.